though we have come to praise the Lord, we are taking safety measures to protect everyone from the spread of coronavirus, also known as COVID-19. A health protocol team is in place to execute safety precautions, thus your cooperation is for the good of everyone present. The Family of Faith is a very affectionate congregation, for that we are extremely proud. Although it might be difficult for most of us, we are asking everyone to refrain from physical contact, such as hugging and shaking hands. Nodding, waving, and smiling will be most appropriate during this season. One of the most significant things that we can do is wash our hands often. If soap and water are not readily available, use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Every worshiper is required to wear a mask or face cover and to practice physical distancing. Though we are temporarily altering our customs, our God still remains the same. Work with us as we trust God for this season as this too shall pass. May God's grace and peace be upon you and may we continue to worship our great God. Why don't you get in How many of you know we serve an amazing God that does amazing things? We serve a supernatural God that can open up doors, that can bring about change and transformation. We serve a God of deliverance. We serve a God of healing. I don't know if you've had a moment today to remember. As I stand here, I think about Jonah as he disobeyed God. And as he was in the belly of the fish, the Bible says that he remembered the Lord. I'm telling you, I don't know if you've ever been in a place in your life where you've been so low, you've been so broke, you've been so hurt, you've been so sick, you've been so frustrated, you've been so stressed out, you've been so anxious, you've been you still in the blame. But whenever you remember the Lord and all he's done for you, whenever he remembers the Lord, God spoke to the fish and commanded him to spit him up, my God. I don't know what's holding you in captivity today. I don't know what's holding your praise in captivity today. But whenever you remember him, God has a way of bringing about change in your life. He has a way of bringing about deliverance in your life. He has a way of breaking chains loose in your life. Come on, take about another 30, 30 seconds and give him all the glory. He deserves it. How many of you know he deserves it? before God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come close to God and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your heart for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. Let there be tears for what you have done. Let there be sorrow and deep grief. Let there be sadness instead of laughter and gloom instead of joy. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up in honor. The word of God for the people of God. Let us bow. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning saying thank you, God. We thank you for life. We thank you for health. 
we thank you for a sound mind right now this morning when things are so uncertain. We just thank you for watching over us all night long, Lord, while we slumber and we slept. And Lord, we thank you that thus far when we woke up this morning, everything was all right. Lord, we got so many things to be thankful for. And this morning, I don't want to ask you for anything. I just want to tell you, thank you. Just thank you for keeping us, Lord. We thank you for the jobs that we have. We thank you for the food on the table, Lord. We thank you for our health. We just have so many things to thank you for. We thank you for this opportunity to worship corporately again, Lord. We thank you for just everything, Lord. Lord, and we're going to go ahead and thank you in advance for the things to come. We thank you for the healing that you're going to cast over this land, Lord. And we just thank you for the peace, Lord, that you're going to bring. We thank you for the sinners that's going to come, Lord. We thank you for the heavy weights that's going to be lifted off the us today, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for so much, Lord. We thank you for the hedge of protection that you put all around us, Lord, when the enemy was on our path, Lord. We thank you for the weapons that were formed, Lord, that you did not let them prosper, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for everything. We thank you even for this time, Lord, that we have had to reflect Lord, and let some things go that we can feel, have more of you inside of us, Lord. Lord, we love you, and we realize we can't do anything without you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the word that's going to come forth today. I pray, Lord, that it bless this congregation in a way that it has never blessed before. And we just thank you, Lord, for never leaving us, never forsaking us, Lord. We thank you for being in this place and let your Holy Spirit dwell in this place like it always does. Lord, I love you. And I'm going to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the victory right now. It is in your name I pray. Amen. Come on, let's bless the Lord today.
Good morning, church. This is a dangerous time to put a preacher's kid and a worship leader up when you say, for your goodness and your mercy toward us. The, the other part is we offer praise. I wonder, can I get three people to offer praise to Jesus today? Up oh, there's one. Up oh, there we go. For your goodness and your mercy toward me, you didn't have to do it, but you did. Oh, no. giving proper honor so would y'all just pause for just one second I got a little happy but we honor Pastor R. Timothy Jones today God bless you sir I'm honored to be here today to Brother Clark and to this music ministry I'm honored to be here to all of the trustees deacons mothers saints and friends as my daddy says la di daddy and everybody <laughs> I am delighted to be here actually this is my first time being in church on a Sunday morning since March We've been uh, like in the sanctuary. I haven't even been in our sanctuary. My pastor's Pastor Jamal Bryant, and uh, I serve as his worship leader, minister of music in New Birth in Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, we've been recording virtually in different places, and so it just feels good to be in church on Sunday. So, y'all, excuse me. I feel a little happy in my feet today too. I'm just I'm a little excited to be here today in Shreveport. I don't have a lot of time. I got to catch a flight, but I got a lot of praise while I'm here. Any, any real praisers in the house? That's what I need to know. I see your mother. You go, I'm taking you my praise partner. I, I, already got, I already know I got another praise partner over here. Any, anybody, has God been good to anybody in this building? Another one. We can't play games with it. It's somebody that is that's struggling even in their bodies with health, health diagnosis and whatnot. But since we're here, we might as well give them glory. How about that? Can you do me a favor? I know we're socially distancing, but just highlight your neighbor and say, hey neighbor. Tell him I'd like to introduce myself. Tell him my name is Victory. Anybody named Victory in the house? Anybody named Victory in the building? Come on, you might as well put your hands on it. Come on, balcony, I need you to. Come on. If y'all will help me, I've got evidence. Everybody, come on. I've got it. Come on, say oh, 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 oh. And put it in the air. My name is and clap your hands like a big church choir. Come on, I've got evidence. Let's go. I've got it.
Say, neighbor, my name is victory. The Bible says in Proverbs 18, I believe it's 21, 22, it says, decree a thing and it shall be established. No, that's Job 22, I'm sorry. Decree a thing and it shall be established. Proverbs says that life and death is in the power of the tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Verse before that, I believe it's verse 21. It says, a man's belly will be full because of what he says out of his mouth. All right. So I understand that I have the power to create what isn't in existence because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world so 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 if i can just create something in the atmosphere pastor can i talk in the house to this yes sir so so look anything can happen in here come on look at your neighbor and say anything can happen in here anything can happen anything pastor said move on i got to move y'all anything let's go i'm obedient anything can happen in here anybody believe anything can happen in here we believe the report of the Lord today. Anything can happen today. Anything can happen today. You are about to experience a life-changing moment. You won't leave the same, the same way you came. Because he's in our very midst. You will be here. Delivered, he's here to set you free, and because God is near, anything can happen in here, in here, in here, anything, anything can happen in here, in here, in here. In here. You are about to experience a life-changing moment you won't leave the same the same way you came because god is in our very midst you will be healed delivered 
He's here to set you free. And because God is near, anything can happen in here. In here. In here. Anything. Anything can happen. Does anybody believe it? Anybody believe it? In here. This Sunday morning. This moment is designed for God to change your life. Glory to God. This moment is designed for God to change your life. Everybody ought to say it. This moment is designed for God to change your life. For God to change your life. The heavens are open. my hands because my spirit is open yes God for God to do it God's gonna do something special the heavens are open the portals are open over Shreveport Louisiana this morning my spirit is open yes it is church for God to do it God's gonna do it today the heavens are open Lord, do something special today. Lord, answer prayers today, Jesus. Put God to do it. Because anything can happen in here. In here. In here. Can somebody sing that with me? Say it. Anything can happen in here. In here. In here. In here. In here. And I've got good news. Something good is happening here. Something good, something good, something good. I've got power to speak that thing. Something good is happening here. Something good, something good, something good. You can turn the track up. Come on. Something good is happening here. Something good. In here. God bless your church. Come on, people of God, let's bless our God. Come on, give God all you have. Your brother Jonathan, God bless you. Amen. Yeah. Anything. Anything. Cut that mic on, man. Come on. Anything can happen in here. In here. In here. Miracles are happening here, in here, in here, in here, and breakthrough is happening here, in here, in here, breakthrough is happening here, in here, in here, one more time. You ought to wave your hands if you know it. Something good is happening, peace for us. Because anything can happen in here. Somebody needs something to happen right now. Yeah. Why don't you just tell the Lord what you need and tell him what you need him to do. Yeah.
just one praise from my breakthrough. Come on, buddy, come on. Yeah, and cool. you too. Somebody ought to believe it. Anything can happen in here. In here. In here. Anything can happen in here. What if? What if you knew that your breakthrough was contingent upon your next praise? What, what if your breakthrough was right after your next praise? If, if I don't, if I don't get it, it won't be because I didn't pray. If I don't get it, it won't be because I didn't praise him. Praise God for Brother Jonathan. He was getting caught up, but he got a plane to catch in a few minutes. God bless you. We're glad you're here. Um, James 4 and 8. The C part of the verse says, Purify your heart, you double-minded. Purify your heart. It has been said that the heart of the problem is the problem of the heart. All of us were born with a heart condition. Because sin is the birth defect of the entire human race. What does it mean to purify the heart? My dears, to purify the heart is not simply to clean the heart. It is also to consecrate the heart. It is to set oneself apart from the world and to devote oneself completely to God. It is not just to clean the heart, but to consecrate the heart. It's not just about being clean. It's about being consecrated because even sinners wear clean clothes. The word double-minded is most interesting. I, I, I used to lose sleep when I would prepare a message and then in the fourth quarter, God says, take another look at a particular word and that word might change the entire course of the whole message. It's this word, double-minded, that... Um, interrupted me yesterday it is a most interesting word 
It is dicycos in the Greek, which, which properly means two sold or, watch this, a person split in half. Now, now, I didn't come to insult anybody, and I'm no mental health specialist. I do the spiritual side, so follow me, if you will. This word literally means, it literally means to be spiritually bipolar. C come on, don't act like you don't know anybody like that. It, it means to be a spiritual schizophrenic. Okay, let me help you. You don't know if they're going to speak today or not. You, you don't know if they're going to hug you or pass right on by. You, you don't know if, they're, if they came prepared to speak in tongues or to cuss in English. Anybody know anybody who's a spiritual schizophrenic? One minute they're saying, I know the Lord will make a way. The next minute they're saying, I don't know how I'm going to make it. One minute they're shouting over the grace and the favor of God. The next minute they are worried to death. And God says, make up your mind. It portrays. And that's the great thing about the Greek language is it, it often speaks in word pictures. It, it portrays the person who tries to face two directions at the same time. All right, walk with me. Walk with me. Face this wall, if you will. Now face this wall, if you will. All right, one more time. Face this wall, if you will. Now face this wall, if you will. Now try to face both walls at the same time. Okay, walk with me. The only way to face both walls at the same time is to have two faces. D don't worry about it, baby. You know some folk like that. Y you understand? They like you when they're with you. Come on now. They talk to you in your face and about you behind your back. There's some folk who are wearing masks before COVID-19. It is the idea, it perhaps is the origin of the idea of being two-faced. Now, 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 now watch this, watch this. You don't have to really worry about them. You really ought to just pray for them because James 1 and 8 says... The double-minded person is unstable in all their ways. The truth is you don't really know no prosperous, messy people. Because prosperous people ain't got time to be messy. In fact, prosperous people got so much going on in their lives, they don't have enough time to create havoc in the lives of other people. Maybe the reason why they're messy is because they ain't got nothing going on. They would tend to their own business if they had some. Preach Tim Jones. Yeah. The, the, the New Living Translation puts it this way. Purify your hearts. For your loyalty is divided between God and the world. What are you saying? Turn your hearts completely and divide it to God. Perhaps the best decision that the double-minded person can make, the best decisions are who they're going to serve. Because God isn't interested in part-time worshipers. God loves the daily worshipers. God loves the folk who can do this on Monday at 1015. 
God wants the folk who can do this on Thursday who can't wait to get in the house of prayer. God wants the folk who can wake up every morning and say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I will delight myself in the Lord who will give me the desires of my heart. See, let me help you. When you're worshiping all week long, nobody has to pump you up. Nobody has to prime you up. Nobody has to prop you up on Sunday. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, all that he's done. So if you had not prayed all week, you'll come to church DOA. Dead on arrival. And leave saying they ain't done nothing. They know the truth is you ain't done nothing today. Best decisions are who you're going to worship. And number two, who they going to be. See, see, and again, I do the spiritual side. I'm no mental health specialist. But... We really don't mind who you decide to be. Just be that same person all the time. We can make the adjustment whatever you decide to be. But baby, it's too much hard work trying to figure out who you are every time we see you. There's a story in Matthew 15. And I'm breaking homiletical rules by running to a whole nother passage in the middle of a sermon. But I ain't in class, I'm at church. Have I got a witness? Matthew 15. Because I've flunked students for this, but I'm breaking the rule. Matthew 15. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law they approached Jesus and, and they said, I'm not ready for that scripture yet. Y'all getting me too happy too fast. You're rushing me now. <laughs> All right. They said, listen, we've been watching your disciples. And what we've noticed is the, the men who follow you Eat without washing their hands. See, when folk need a problem, they'll always find one. And when they can't find one, they'll create one. I can think of a whole lot of things to talk about versus somebody washing their hands when they pick up their own poke chop. Ever got a witness? So, so Jesus um, challenged there. Watch this: convenient commitment to tradition. He said, "See, your, your disciples they they violated they violated the tradition because at this church we wash our hands before we eat. Ain't nobody joining, but we wash our hands." We ain't baptized this year. Um, come on. I cry, can't sing, but at this church. Preacher can't preach, but at this church. We wash our hands. Come on, y'all. Uh-huh. See, 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 they violated not the word of God, but the tradition of our church. Mm. See, see, Jesus, Jesus challenged their convenient commitment to tradition. He emphasized the commands of God over their traditions. Now watch this, y'all. Traditions are great. We need traditions. However, what we do should never trump what God requires. See, it's sinful 
to love things that God hates. Let, let me tell you what Jesus says about these same folk. Now I'm ready for that scripture. Here's what Jesus says about those same folk. He says, these people honor me with their lips, but their, but their hearts, come on y'all, are far from me. Huh? They, they, they worship me in vain. And their teachings are merely human rules. You know, God is not interested in uh, lip service. And you know, you know you can sing a lie. As quick as you can tell a lie. Okay, okay. Young folk, before you got, before the MP3s, iTunes, and the like, there was a thing called a cassette. Google it. There was an a side and a B side. I have a cassette of a group I love to hear. They've got a song on the A side that says you've got your hooks in me. But on the B side, they got a song that says, let's just kiss. It's the same group. It's the same cassette. And God is saying, all the stuff y'all sing ain't lining up. Make up your mind. You with me? You want me to hold you or you want me to kiss you and let you go? Oh, man, I don't know how they got in the sermon. God says these people they honor me with their lips but their hearts are not their hearts are not here and then he says watch this they worship me in vain how tragic it would be to do this in vain. Physically, the heart and the mouth, on average, are about 14 inches apart. But when it comes to genuine worship, they have to be in the same place. See, our lips and our lives have to say the same thing. See, God wants authentic worship, not cheap church. And there's some folk who don't know the difference. He wants authentic worship, not cheap church. God is never glorified when people come late, give nothing, do little, shout loud, live low, expect much, and then have the audacity to leave early. God demands commitment, but he never offers convenience. God promised to meet our needs, but not our expectations. Once upon a time, people asked, what must I do to be saved? Now they ask, what's in it for me? Now, I don't, I, I, I don't pastor but one church, but at this church, I can tell you, members are not clients, ministry is not customer service, and worship is not entertainment. In fact, at this church, only God sits in the audience and the rest of us are on the stage. And whatever we do ought to bring glory and honor and joy to his heart. My, my question, see, I, I've been walking with the Lord too long to play with him now. I, I've been in the faith 45 years. I, I've been preaching the word of our God for, for 35 years. 35 years 
and I, I don't have time to play with this thing now because I may have, at 50 years old, I may have seen more days than I will see. So, so I don't have no time to waste. So the question I have to ask when I drive off the lot is, did God enjoy church today? I'm not worried about whether or not people enjoy church. The question is, did God enjoy church today? A little boy prayed one Sunday night, God, church was good today. I just wish you had been there. And Jesus admonishes these religious leaders by redirecting them to the heart versus the hand. Now, the charge they brought up against Jesus' followers was that they were eating without washing their hands. Look at how Jesus flips the script. Look at Matthew 15, 18 through 20. He says, y'all looking at somebody else's hands, I challenge you to look at your own heart. He says the things that come out of a person's mouth come from the heart and these things defile them. Watch this. He says for out of the heart comes evil thoughts. Y'all worried about whether or not they washed their hands before they ate. But look at what comes out of the heart. Murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander. These are what defile a person. But eating with unwashed hands does not. Mm. I'm fixing to violate another rule and lift another scripture in the middle of the preaching passage. But I told you already I'm at church. Not in class. David's most significant prayer is Psalm 51. I, I know we like 23. 27. But look at 51. Because David was visited by the prophet Nathan. See, he thought he had gotten away with, with sin. And the prophet confronted him about his adultery with Bathsheba. And having that woman's husband killed to cover it up. And it was under conviction that David prayed, creating. A clean heart. Oh God. I've been searching the scriptures. To see how God fixes a heart. I'm still working on that. When I have thoroughly surveyed the scriptures and got it figured out. I'll let you know. So I, I'm honest enough to tell you. I'm not real sure. Of how God fixes a heart. But what I do know is. He can give you a new one. Come go with me. See a new heart requires at least three things. You need a diagnosis, a doctor, and a donor. Alright come on. Here's the diagnosis. Jeremiah 17 and 9. The heart is deceitful above all things. I got a doctor for you. He's in Ezekiel 36 and 26. He says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you, but you also need a donor. Romans 5 and 8 says, God demonstrates his own love to us in that while we were yet sinners. Because you do know a heart donor got to die. Christ died for us. John 15 and 13 says, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man will lay down his life for his... He died, y'all. I said he died. Didn't he die? He died, y'all. Out on Calvary. He died. He hung from the sixth to the ninth hour. He died, y'all. And then one of the soldiers said, Surely this is the son of the living God. He died, y'all. Didn't he die? One Friday he died. They took him down. I hear Reverend Bass now say, They took my rock. Put my rock in a rock. Put rocks all around the rock. 
put a rock on top of the rock and roll the rock up onto the rock that contained my rock. But early Sunday morning, he got up with all the power. I said he got up. Y'all couldn't come to church on Easter, but this is a good time to tell the world he got up with all power in the palm of his hands. Come on, let's bless him today. Amen. Amen. He got up, y'all. With all power. The old preacher used to call the roll and say, Somebody said he got up one Monday. You know, and the Monday folk would just jump up. Somebody met him one Tuesday. Then the Tuesday, y'all remember that? Somebody said one Wednesday evening. Somebody met him one Thursday. Anybody meet him one Friday? Last night of the revival, Miss Hartwell prayed one more prayer. I know it's all right. Somebody said one Saturday, I didn't have him on my mind. I was going to the time out, and my clothes laid out. I decided to take a nap before going to hang out with Brother Phil. But something struck you in the top of your head and ran down to the sole of your feet. Somebody said one Sunday. Come on, bless the Lord. I'm through. Man, I feel all right. I said, I feel all right. Come on, bless the Lord, people of God. Come on, bless the Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. Yes. Whether you are in the sanctuary, listening on the radio, watching us on television, or yes. via one of our digital platforms, we are happy to have you with us. At Peaceful Rest, we value people. We want you to know. We want you to know that you are deeply loved. That you are deeply loved. Deeply loved by yes. our God, who gave us his only begotten son. Mm. That whoever believes in him should not perish, but have God. everlasting life. If this is your first time sharing with us, please text WELCOME to 318-225-7510. If you'd like to begin the new life or join the family of faith, please text LIFE to 318-225-7510. You can also get connected by visiting our website at PeacefulRest.com. If you're in the building and you are a guest sharing with us for the very first time, or if you never filled out a card that looks like this, and this is for every guest in the building. If you look in the pew rack on the second level, raise your hand. The brothers will provide a card for you. Please fill out this card, if you will. Tear off part of it. Put it in the offering, and you can keep the other part. Amen.
for oh, come on church to silver These things, these things, and yeah, and forget about, and all. I've decided, what about you? I've decided. God, I pray that every outstanding need in our church would be met. I pray, God, that as we prepare to give, that every promise in your word concerning giving would be made manifest in our lives. And God, we are praying for a revival in our city. There's shootings every day. God, there is moral decay in the land. There are tropical storms and hurricanes in the sea. And the West Coast is on fire. There are wars and rumors of wars. God, there's political upheaval in Washington. And if we ever needed you before, God, we sure enough need you now. God, we know we can trust you. So we're asking you to see us through now. As we prepare to leave God, we pray, God, that you would go with us and stand by us. As we journey to our various destinations. We love you God. We bless you right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. You'll take your seat for just a second. Yes. In my mind. Hey, 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 yes. Brothers, if you'll come. Yes, Washington, Brother Washington. Yeah, Jack. This area, if you'll gather your belongings and face, stand and face the walls, I feel all right today. Yes, God. 
Oh God, yes. Yes, God. Mm. Oh God. Yes, Susan, we're yet praying for your family. And um, we have a noonday service for our seasoned saints. Uh, and I'm telling you, it's a blessing. So y'all come on. We got music and everything. So y'all come on. Amen. Best 50 minutes of your day. This section, if you will stand. That's good stuff. Y'all remember that? Bless you. Bless you, man. Bless you. This section of your stand face, Sister Judy.
love y'all. Thank you so much. All right. Hello, my family of faith. I pray that all is well with you and your family. We are so excited to announce our fall discipleship series that begins on September 6th. And this year, we're using our very own book entitled Soul Care. Please visit our website to get registered now. God bless you. May the Lord God keep you. Hello, my family of faith. I pray that all is well with you and your family. We are so excited to announce our fall discipleship series that begins on September 6th. And this year, we're using our very own book entitled Soul Care. Please visit our website to get registered now. God bless you. May the Lord God keep you. Hello, my family of faith. I pray that all is well with you and your family. We are so excited to announce our fall discipleship series that begins on September 6th. And this year, we're using our very own book entitled Soul Care. Please visit our website to get registered now. God bless you. May the Lord God keep you. Hello, my family of faith. I pray that all is well with you and your family. We are so excited to announce our fall discipleship series that begins on September 6th. And this year, we're using our very own book entitled Soul Care. Please visit our website to get registered now. God bless you. May the Lord God keep you. Hello, my family of faith. I pray that all is well with you and your family. We are so excited to announce our fall discipleship series that begins on September 6th. And this year, we're using our very own book entitled Soul Care. Please visit our website to get registered now. God bless you. May the Lord God keep you. Hello, my family of faith. I pray that all is well with you and your family. We are so excited to announce our fall discipleship series that begins on September 6th. And this year, we're using our very own book entitled Soul Care. Please visit our website to get registered now. God bless you. May the Lord God keep you. Hello, my family of faith. I pray that all is well with you and your family. We are so excited to announce our fall discipleship series that begins on September 6th. And this year, we're using our very own book entitled Soul Care. Please visit our website to get registered now. God bless you. May the Lord God keep you. Hello, my family of faith. I pray that all is well with you and your family. We are so excited to announce our fall discipleship series that begins on September 6th. And this year, we're using our very own book entitled Soul Care. Please visit our website to get registered now. God bless you. May the Lord God keep you. Hello, my family of faith. I pray that all is well with you and your family. We are so excited to announce our fall discipleship series that begins on September 6th. And this year, we're using our very own book entitled Soul Care. Please visit our website to get registered now. God bless you. May the Lord God keep you. Hello, my family of faith. I pray that all is well with you and your family. We are so excited to announce our fall discipleship series that begins on September 6th. And this year, we're using our very own book entitled Soul Care. Please visit our website to get registered now. 